Hi, Rixers here, back with a completely different video. A game I covered back when the game was an older patch and beta version, U-Boat. So if you ever wanted to play a game that kind of emulates DOS boot in some way, or have some kind of like clickable action-adventure game driving as U-Boat Commander, well, U-Boat's for you. This game does automate, or you can manually do a lot of different tests in this game that kind of, it's not always, always necessary one for one, but they kind of did a pretty good job of making it realistic enough, but clickable enough that you can click on stuff to do actions. You don't have to memorize all these key bindings and stuff like that. So let's get into it. So because my old save is no longer compatible, you can select what kind of port and boat you want to do. Um, just a whole bunch of them, actually. It's like, oh, I like that one. No, it's kind of funny, but it says difficulty hard. Hmm, I wonder... I wonder... Some of these are more famous U-boats, I've noticed as well. And then there's U-1055. Oh, wow. So that's like the hardest campaign. U-96... And Red Devil, U552, kind of have a more easier start, whereas U96 is like the earliest war start, whereas U52 is like a later war start. I am noticing the pattern of the dates here. Let's just start with U96, because I like to thank Pufferfish with a razor nose look thing. So, historically... As a spoiler, too, because this is based on a past history or event. Basically, the U-Boat's eventually lost. <laughs> That's pretty much what it is. But in this game, you can kind of do what-if scenarios, too, or do historical accurate missions, supposedly, like the game claims you can do. So let's get started and hit next. Hmm. What, how realistic of simulated prefer? Now, this is new. Even just as an optimal entertainment simulation, access to contribute to an interest and won't get in your way. Balanced. Hmm. Let me hit balanced. I don't. I'm not hardcore. I want the balanced experience. Entertaining is okay too. Like that's probably like the easiest. This is normal and hardcore. Of course, like name is is hard. Let's just do balanced. Hmm. So how much crew management you want to be? Now this is also a new screen to me at least. I'm going to do Intermediate. That's probably what the game originally was designed for. Experts, if you want to be that meticulous with your details. So let's just do the middle ground if it keeps giving me these kind of options. Introduction to Tutorial Missions. Nah. Well, it does warn you. That's actually nice. I like games that say, hey look, you can turn this off if you really want to. But you don't have to if you don't want to kind of statement. This is actually a nice game design feature. Um, when I first started this game uh, last year, or at least did it as just like a what if, and it was still learning YouTube. I was still learning YouTube, of course. Everybody learns on this platform. Everyone does a different style. That's basically how it goes. I'm going to disable it because I do know or remember most of the basics, not all of them. I'm sure there's dumb stuff that I'm probably going to hit my head on the wall and go, darn, I should have done that tutorial. So, I'm going to learn on the fly. Just hit confirm. Gameplay normal, first person only. Oh, if you want to be in first person, kind of like Aoa uh, Silent Hunter. That would actually be a cool game to cover sometime, is the uh, Silent Hunter series. Silent Hunter is a much more involved process. I have number three and four. And I don't know with three, there's going to be a lot of stuff I have to tinker with to get it to run better. Because it's an ancient, by video game standards, game. On the Steam edition, at least. So I have to look into that. Gameplay mode, normal. Travel system, realistic. Yeah, we'll keep that realistic. AI difficulty, we'll keep on medium. I'll do that there. Yeah, I'd rather to have these aesthetic for expanded morale settings. I prefer decibel because it's more precise. Classic is okay. 
but I prefer decimal for that. Of course, food management. Yeah, I want that on. That's normal. Automatic, only if enough fuel. Let's, let's not be too brutal. Let's do automatic, only if enough fuel. So basically, with mission completion, that means if I complete the objective and I have enough fuel to automatically return home, it will allow me to click on that and I don't have to like fast travel all the way back. So let's have mission completion like that. Collision damage. Yes, of course on. Why would you play a game without collision damage that's supposed to simulate damage? Yes. That's more difficult a game may make for having a dangerous strategy against your sub. Well, yeah. I mean, why would I have that off? I mean, it's nice to have that as a feature, but why would you ever switch this off if you want to do semi-realism? Repeat of flaws. Oh, boy. Let's see what this says. Okay, well, let's do realistic for that. That I will budge and do realistic so I can see how realistic they make realistic. So you can have more realism with your realism. Kind of doing like an exhibit thing, but let's do that. High detection hit. Detail information about your visibility. Oh, okay, so if you check this on, it disables detailed information if you get detected. Well, I want that to be kept off then, just for now. You're not going to be that brutal. She manis. Realistic belge. Yeah, we'll keep that on. Why would I want that off? Realistic earth. Yeah, we'll keep the curvatures on. Darker nights. Does not affect sight vision of AI. No, we're going to keep that off for now. Damage difficulty medium. If you pursue realism, we recommend the average setting. But each of these settings may potentially be okay. Well, we'll keep that medium for now then. Alright, well, let's go to next. Oh, look, you can customize your character. You can also customize, I guess, your character's outer appearance. If you left-click drag here. Yeah, large and in charge. No, let's keep it a little bit towards here, I guess, and hit apply. Oh, cool, you can wear a turtleneck sweater, which is perfect all the time. Yes, <laughs> let's do that there. There's some goofy character. This is his cosmetic. I'll just briefly... What? What happened to his pants? Yeah, let's keep pants one. Binoculars. Oh, uh, accessories. Oh, no, that just looks weird. Pipe, none. Glasses. Eye patch, binoculars. Now let's do none. We don't need binoculars. The hat. You can choose not to wear a hat or have a hat. What on earth? Holy moly, how many hats can you put on a character creation? There's like six, seven, I think there's like ten. Okay, well, you know what? The only hat I think would make sense is, why would you wear this hat on a U-boat? I, I don't get that. So let's put the captain's hat on. Hairstyle. Uh, let's do one. Basic beard. You can do really basic beard or more beard. Or maximum beard. I'll do basic beard, because maximum beard just looks weird. Hair color, you can change that. Oh, wow. They, they definitely made this character... Uh, oh, wow, there's a lot of different faces, too. So the character creation screen is definitely more detailed than the last time I played this game, I can tell you that. Oh. What happened to his head? Some of these uh, heads are a bit strange. Like, in terms of the character creation thing. Oh, boy. Let's do that one. I don't know that type. No. Yeah, let's do let's do type five. Let's name ourselves. I'm gonna name myself myself. Ah, the start of the early mid war period, 1941, Port of La Rochelle. So we're near the Port of France, pretty much. There is the coding tower of U96. There's a guy. Checking the periscope. A nice wooded interior. Very wow. Okay. Wow. So this is the first part of revisiting U-Boat. I do also run a Ko-Fi page if you wish to support the channel. Still have the goal of getting a better flight stick to understand uh, simulators such as DCS and IL-2 Stormific better. And I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll keep continuing on with you, Belt. This is 
Rickster's Journey, signing off.